We are held in the hands of grace Forever safe in the arms of love Like a mother gives protection With a warm embrace We are held in the hands of grace. <laughs> One more time. Good morning and now good afternoon, my friends. We continue to be with that. Isn't that interesting? How about good day? Uh, my name is Dr. David Goldberg and I'm one of your ministers here at Unity on the Avenue Spiritual Center. And if you're with us for the first time, welcome. And if you've been with us for decades, thank you and welcome. And as we share every week, we want you to know that we are a radically inclusive community. We welcome all people all races, all relational orientations and gender identities, and all paths to the divine, including those who may not be on a spiritual path. So wherever you are on your journey, please know you are welcome here and you are integral to this beloved community. I have a, a couple of announcements that I wanted to share with you today. Our spiritual book club is just an amazing group of folks who continue to gather. They went strong during the pandemic. They're continuing to go strong with us now. And uh, the next gathering will be on Sunday, October 23rd at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, our beloved Linda continues to facilitate this great group. And we're looking at breaking the age code, how your beliefs about aging determine how long and how well you live. I'm signing up. Uh, so please reach out to Linda, who is with us today. You can reach out to Bobby. She can fill you in with more information. And I encourage you to take advantage of that tremendous opportunity. We also are having our annual Safe Halloween celebration. It's taking place on Halloween. What a concept. I love doing things on the day when they're supposed to happen. That's just how I was raised. So that's going to be four to six on Halloween. We invite you to bring your littles. We invite you to come in costume. Uh, this is the brainchild of our beloved Eustane Talley, who is downstairs now with the youth. So it's a safe trick-or-treat opportunity for kids, for grandkids, in Pam's case, for great-grandkids. Um, she started very young when she was three. So. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a good thing, and we welcome you to, to that effort. 
Uh, once again, we're asking just for your prayer support of our beloved prayer chaplains who are gathering in retreat on October 28th. For those familiar with the CSL, the Centers for Spiritual Living construct of practitioners, uh, our chaplains are also an extension of the ecclesiastical body. And this year, our chaplains are taking the lead with uh, Reverend Doris's help in pulling together all of the chaplains from the Unity Churches across the Front Range. So we ask that you simply hold them in consciousness on this powerful day of, of retreat and meditation and growth and renewal. Uh, we're really excited to have Deb Nab join us. Deb is a dog behavioral therapist and specialist. She goes by the Mutt Master. Uh, Deb helped Rick and I find our little, uh, our little terrier, Terry the Terrier, two years ago. So I know from whence she speaks. She's an extraordinary being. She and her husband have 11, count them, 11 dogs of their own at the Mutt Master Mansion. Uh, everything from a Chihuahua to a Mastiff named Floyd, and they're all well behaved and they play well together. Um, so anyway, uh, all of that to say, Deb is gonna be with us on Sunday, November 6th from 1.30 to three o'clock. It's a love offering, so pay as you can. We're humbly requesting a $20 love offering, and please don't let finances stand in your way. The title of Deb's workshop is, It's Not the Dog, it's you. So yeah, right? So come prepared. And because I'm the one who asked, this is just for the two leggeds. So uh, kindly leave the four leggeds at home for this one. So as you can tell, we've got a lot going on. Um, our Foundations of Unity class kicked off with Reverend Doris. We've got about a dozen beloveds taking place in that class. We're rocking and rolling here at UOTA. And as we uh, move into our service today then, I just wanted to recognize some special guests who are with us once again. Reverend Paula, thank you for coming back. We are so grateful to see you. And <clears throat> Reverend George, welcome as always. Reverend George, uh, talk about serendipity and spirit having plans. We are talking about, um, you know, as we engage in Emily Cady's work, um, on spiritual truths. Reverend George is in the process of translating that book into Swahili. Oh, wow. So we are honored to be a part of your process and thank you for your good work. And now my friends, the reason we all come on Sundays really, Karen Karsh. Oh my God. <laughs> is what we know to be true, my friends. So as we enter into this, this time of prayer, this moment of sacred holiness, please join me in welcoming one of our extraordinary prayer chaplains, Heidi Houston, who is also serving as the co-president of our board of trustees. Good morning, everyone. I will invite all of you to in this moment to be quiet, but I think we should do something that's fun, that I like to do. 
uh, it's, a, it's a breathing exercise, but it's really short. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to, I'll demonstrate for you. Take in a deep breath. Ah. Now if you all will just center into that place in your heart and let the outside world go for a moment and connect to your divine. Divine spirit within me and within all of us, move me in the direction of my highest good this day. Move my mind, move my body, move my soul, move my emotions into that place so that I am able to be my best, my highest, my divine that I serve in the world and here today in my heart and in my divine qualities that are there. Divine beloved, we relinquish the running of our lives to our spiritual selves and know that our spiritual selves, our divine nature, they're always there crying out for us to just listen not with a sense of bondage, but with joyful freedom to be in the flow and abide in the consciousness that is our divine and the divine through daily practice of prayer and meditation and spiritual development. That we know that this is all good for our faith, for strengthening our lives, for enriching ourselves every day, for growing, and we aim high in that way. With this prayer, we know that we have unlimited potential to experience true freedom, and so it is. And let us say our statement of faith. There is only power and one presence in the universe and in my life, God the good omnipotent. We're all in this together, together right now. Let's try to make it better for each other somehow. No one should feel hungry. Everyone should feel love. We're all in this together, every one of us. Isn't that right? We're all in this together right now. Let's try. Everyone should feel hungry, everyone should feel love. We're all in this together, every one of us. Me and you, you and me, you and me, me and you, that means the whole world too. Everyone should feel one should go hungry we're all in this together right now we gotta find a way to make it okay for each other so
Thank you, Karen. Beautifully done, as always, my friend. So grateful for you. And so, my friends, we are continuing the series that uh, Reverend Doris launched last week on Lessons in Truth by Emily Cady. Have you ever had one of those moments as you're working on something and you think about something and you just get one of those song buds in your ear and it just kind of goes on and on and on and it's with you all week? And as I was with this work and what I wanted to share on lessons three and four, specifically around thinking and denials in the process of prayer, I don't know how, I don't know why, the song that kept coming to me was the song Signs by five-man electrical band from 1971. <laughs> Ringing a bell? And the sign said, long-haired, freaky people need not apply. So I tucked my hair up under my hat, and I went in to ask him why. He said, you look like a fine, upstanding young man. I think you'll do. And I pulled off my hat and said, imagine that. Huh, me working for you. When then we get into, yes, sign, sign, everywhere a sign, blocking up the scenery, mess in my mind, breaking my mind, sorry. Do this, don't do that, can't you read the sign? Now I have to bring this back to church, so <laughs> we go to the last verse. And the sign said, everybody welcome. Come in, kneel down and pray. But when they passed around the plate at the end of it all, I didn't have a penny to pay. So I got me a pen and a paper, and I made up my own little sign. Join me. I said, thank you, Lord, for thinking about me. I'm alive and doing fine. Right? Is that a sign we're paying attention to? That is something that uh, Emily Cady invites us into when we're talking about thinking and when we're talking about um, what we're exploring today. She offers, in, in that chapter on thinking, she offers us a bridge between God and humans and our humanity. And she does it by addressing our understanding of the threefold nature of who we are and why we're here spirit, soul, body. So she explores that thinking, our main spiritual discipline, is about building an awareness of the God mind uh, providing the divine ideas, right? We know as metaphysicians that everything is created twice. She is exploring the same thing in different languaging. The things we think, the things we tell ourselves, the things we speak out loud, make a difference, and that is how things are affected on the planet. And what do we know about prayer? Whatever your terminology, what do we know about treatment? What do we know about what we are, are putting out into the field? That we're not trying to change God's mind. We're not going to say, you know, we're not trying to convince God that I really am worthy of winning the Powerball and I know exactly what to do with $360 million. We're not convincing God, we're convincing ourselves. So that is the power of prayer, that's the power of treatment. What else do we know? We know, many of us, at the core of our being, and if this is new for you, let's have a conversation, I invite you into it as well. We know that when we change our thinking, we can change our life. That's why we're here, that is our conscious work. So when Doris and I were having the conversation about what we wanted our next book exploration to be, I got to choose the last one. Doris got to choose this one. She said, how about Lessons in Truth by Katie? I said, awesome. I know about this much about it, so I'm learning with you as we go along this process. And Doris was kind enough to find the book on our bookshelf in the office that we share. And I'm not exactly sure when it was published. Um, <laughs> And it's, it's had a few different loving owners, and I love it, right? The publisher in me loves being with this, and I love the paper, and I love the energy that all of these beloveds brought to it. Um, and now at some point, I'll put it back together. 
And because God has a sense of humor, many of you know that I'm uh, in the middle of taking th- uh, five classes on the path to becoming ordained in the unity tradition. I'm, I'm still uh, ordained in good standing with Centers for Spiritual Living, and I'm moving toward ordination in unity as well. As my friend Temple Hayes says, I will be bi spiritual. <laughs> you have to be careful with that one. So, I share that with you while I'm in this class. um, I'm taking a class on prayer and meditation, and one of the required textbooks is Katie's Lessons in Truth. So I had the chance to buy my own copy of it. So I get the old and the new, I get the juxtaposition, I get to make my own marks, and I get to accept the wisdom that's being presented. So just a little bit about my odd process for you. So again, the thing that we know about thinking then from our perspective is when Myrtle Fillmore was sick, she spent two years in prayer. She spent two years talking to every cell in her body and and expressing love and expressing light and expressing the beauty and perfection that was every cell in her being. And so it was through that thinking, it was through her prayer work that she became one of the co-founders of this tradition, of this powerful tradition that we are bringing to the world. So many of us, uh, either previously or perhaps still, Ask for demonstrations when we pray, right? Uh, I'm, I'm okay praying for somebody. I'm okay praying for myself or for a family member. And God, let me know that you hear me. Let, me. let me know that you're paying attention. Let me know that I'm not doing this in vain, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. And I would just ask you to consider what are the signs that are already all around you that you may not be paying attention to, that maybe you're misinterpreting. What are the signs that you're already receiving? We're doing a lot of work in in my prayer class around the concept of unanswered prayer. Is there such a thing as unanswered prayer? My humble opinion is no. And once again, being a song guy, I'm reminded of the Garth Brooks song, Unanswered Prayers, right? And he he talks about going to a high school reunion uh, with his beloved wife and running into a former flame who he was so in love with and he was praying, praying, praying and they could be together and he thought that God didn't answer his prayer slash that the answer to his prayer was no and he never would have had the amazing life that he has if God had answered that prayer. So what if every prayer is answered? What if sometimes the answer is no? What if sometimes the answer is not yet? What if the answer is this or something better? So that's all in our human mind. That's all in what we get to be with and work through. So as we, I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth here between thinking and denials because denials make our thinking sharper and we can't have thinking without denials. So you're gonna feel me bouncing back and forth a little bit. I'm just giving the linear thinkers a heads up here. So when we talk about denials, Katie trusts that most of us understand that denials aren't about denying negative conditions or circumstances, right? We're not putting on the the rose-colored glasses. We're not doing a spiritual bypass. Rather, most of us believe that denials are about denying in consciousness a negative experience of the condition, right? Everything is energy and information until I choose to label it. So if I choose to say, oh, this is bad, okay. If I choose to say, oh, this is interesting. My mom said I learned two words the, the, the years I traveled in the musical group up with people, interesting and unique. <laughs> Isn't that a unique expression? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So if there's anything in there for you, I invite you, uh, I invite you into that. And Katie says several times, the first step toward freeing ourselves from our troubles is to get rid of our erroneous beliefs about God and about ourselves. 
So she's inviting us into that place of knowing our oneness, knowing our connection to the higher power, whatever we call her or him or it or them, right? There's no bad, there's no wrong. Whatever works for you, know that you are connected to that. And your definition is perfect. Your definition doesn't have to be my definition. I'm not here to tell you what to believe. I'm inviting you into that place of belief. And so for Katie, the only two denials that really matter are denying the false God and denying the false self. So be in that place of how that speaks to you. And she offers four denial statements that have great power. The first is, there is no evil. And I would add, within me. We all know that regardless of our interpretation or our involvement with the Lord's Prayer, when we hear those words, deliver us from evil, that is what Katie is inviting us into. What if there is no evil? As we are in a monotheistic teaching, as we are in that place of love and connection, as we are in that place of the ubiquitous presence of the divine, how can there be evil? What if evil is one of those things that I'm choosing to label and God is saying, okay, and, right? Inviting us into a deeper conversation with that. Uh, the second denial statement, a second denial statement, there is no absence of life, substance, or intelligence anywhere in me. And again, I reference the Lord's Prayer on earth as it is in heaven. So what if, my friends, what if that's what we are living now? What if this is heaven? Some of us are thinking, rut row. <laughs> The good news is, it's not hell. Um, so, yeah, so that is what I would invite us into. She is, uh, she is asking us to use thinking to build a consciousness of no evil in me and no evil in life. And so as I think about that then, once again, um, another song bug for you, and you're welcome in advance, um, Aretha Franklin from many years ago. She's inviting us into thinking in her own metaphysical way. You better think, right? You better think. Think about what you're trying to do to me. Yeah, think. Let your mind go. Let yourself be free. People walking around every day, playing games, taking scores, trying to make other people lose their minds. Well, be careful, you're gonna lose yours. Yeah, think. Think about what you're trying to do to me. Yeah, think. Let your mind go, let yourself be free. You need me and I need you. Without each other, there ain't nothing we can do. Oh, freedom, freedom, freedom. Yeah, freedom, freedom, freedom. We need to think. I think she was onto something. So just as the Fillmores looked for that golden thread of truth through all of the world's traditions and discovered that it was that perspective of oneness, it was that perspective of mutual respect and love and, and connectedness, so too, virtually every uh, major religious spiritual system, if you will, has some form of denial or denying. Uh, every religion in the, throughout the ages has had part of that as part of the foundation of the teaching. So in the Muslim tradition, perhaps you've seen some of the stock footage that I have of these young boys sitting for hours in front of their Qurans and memorizing the Quran. That is a form of denial. They are denying that which doesn't suit them or fit in their tradition. 
uh, or the Jews at the Wailing Wall, one of the former, uh, one of the walls of the former temple that was destroyed. The Jews are praying at the Wailing Wall. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a this is bad, I'm letting this go thing. It can be a this is positive and this is what I'm training my mind to think thing, right? So let's not think of denial as bad as Rick is working through this week. He's on Weight Watchers again. So <laughs> den denial has a whole, different, uh, a whole different form. But I'm inviting you into the positive aspect of denial. So according to Webster, then, there are two definitions. Uh, one is to deny, and, and that is in the form of withholding, as to deny bread or food to the hungry. In another sense, and I believe in the way Jesus was using it, is to declare not to be true. So I know that this is not the truth of me. Uh, when, when Doris prays with you so beautifully, when our chaplains pray with you, they see the light of who you are. They know that this circumstance that you may be experiencing, that your human self identifies as less than positive, is not who you are. They deny that for you and send that back to the nothingness from which it came. So denial has, has a powerful place in, in our teaching. Uh, and so the four denials then, there are air thoughts which ne nearly everybody holds and people have, and these have grown from out of sickness and trouble, and um, it, it's been a defense mechanism for us. Our, our egos have stepped in and uh, helped us deny some things that may actually be good for us. And so what that looks like then, the first uh, denial is there is no evil. Um, the second piece then, there is, no, uh, uh, there is no absence of life, substance, or intelligence anywhere. The third denial is pain, sickness, poverty, old age, and death cannot master me for they are not real. And the fourth denial then is there is nothing in all the universe for me to fear. And what we know then from scripture, for greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. So what does that look like then? How, how do I put denial into practical application in my everyday life? Again, Katie comes to the rescue. Um, she says, calmly realize the meaning as you speak the words to yourself. We were having a, a, a conversation before our service today and, and one of my friends and colleagues, was, uh, we were talking about a topic and they said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to remove the emotion from this. I'm just going to speak to the fact of this. Isn't that a great opportunity? Isn't that a great invitation? And to be clear, both are good and strong and powerful. And to be consciously aware that I'm in my thinking brain or I'm in the space of feeling. So yeah, be with that. What does that look like? What does that feel like for you? There is no evil. There is no reality, life, or intelligence. Pain, sickness, poverty, old age hath no power over me, and there's nothing for me to fear. And so, my friends, when we think about thinking, I invite you to pay attention to the signs that are all around you. Uh, any of you who are on social media know that I have the, the great good fortune to do a fair amount of weddings. I love celebrating joy. One of my mantras is never postpone joy. And yesterday on my uh, five hour drive to Crested Butte, and because Crested Butte wasn't quite perfect enough, we went an hour beyond Crested Butte. I'm like, oh my, God, oh my goodness, what a darling couple. Uh, um, and I have to tell you, the father of the, and this may be too much information and I apologize in advance, the father of the bride had to stop by the side of the road to relieve himself. The father of the groom got car sick. The groom was on his way to getting car sick and needed smelling salts. I'm like, eh, what else could go wrong? This is a perfect day. And there I was, a little ray of sunshine. Um, <laughs> 
and I share this with you, you know, again, as I'm thinking about signs and, and thinking about how we're gonna talk about this today, this, what, this, this sign still sticks with me. So I'm coming off of a beautiful drive over a pass, Cottonwood Pass, uh, coming out of it. It's just gorgeous on the other side of the pass. There's this billboard, um, and it's the size of a billboard, but it's on the ground. It's on a trailer, right? So it's, it's right at eye level, and it says, keep your rubber on the trail. Here in Colorado, blah, 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 biodiversity, stay on the trail, don't, don't drive in the alpine tundra. And it's this huge billboard on a trailer with rubber tires on the tundra. <laughs> Sometimes we send mixed messages. I was thinking about this from another perspective. I was having a meeting with uh, my accountant who I worked with for years. Martin was an extraordinary being. He was a, a, a wonderful, worked magic with numbers in a good way, in a legal way. Um, <laughs> and he was so happy for his accounting firm that they were getting a new graphic identity, graphic standards, a new brand, a new logo. And they went through this whole process in the meetings and the focus groups and the money and the designers and yak, 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 yak. And he hands me his new business card. And I think I looked underwhelmed based on my experience in, in marketing and communication and public relations. I'm like, Martin, these are great. Who convinced a CPA firm to use red ink in their logo. <laughs> Somebody got paid a lot of money, right? And it's just a blind spot. And now everywhere I look, my bank, Vector Bank, has red in their logo. US Bank has red ink in their logo. Who thinks it's a good idea to brand a bank with red ink? So my point is, what are the messages that we're sending? What are the messages that you are sending in your life that may not be as congruent as you would like? So let's, let's think about that. Let's be in that space. And as we think about denial, honestly, I am still with this concept. This is not something that I have had a lot of experience with in the, in the Centers for Spiritual Living and the religious science tradition. Yes, of course, we speak to it. Yes, it's included. <clears throat> and it's not something that we spend a lot of time on. So I'm right there with you in learning this process. And I'm learning it and I, and I find it powerful. And yes, I would share with you that now I know when we're looking at denial, we are not talking about a river in Egypt. So I will leave you with that. Um, please join us again next week. Reverend Doris will continue to dive into Lessons in Truth by Emily Cady. If you haven't read it, you can find an old copy, you can find a new copy, you can find an e-copy, you can find a free copy. It's really very much worth your time and worth the read. And if you would please join me in prayer. <sighs> How good it is to be a part of a tradition that is absolutely grounded in principle and open at the top. That we recognize that there are principles, that there are Mm, methods and procedures and ideas that have been codified to make our lives easier however we think, however we feel, however we choose to engage in this material. So I bless this beloved teacher of teachers as we continue to explore lessons in truth, the power that is in the principles. And I know that as we move forward this week, as we think about thinking, as we think about who we are, we recognize the divinity in ourselves in each and every being. That is what I think, that is what I know at the core of my being. And as we look at the concept of denial, I needn't deny myself anything, for mine is not a vengeful or a spiteful or a punishing, but rather I'm invited into that space of denying that which is absolutely not my truth. And so I know that for each being within the sound of my voice. 
I release anything that is out of alignment with your divinity and send it back to the nothingness from which it came. It is good, it is strong, it is powerful. You are good, you are strong, you are powerful beyond measure. So I say thank you. I, th I say thank you, Spirit. Thank you for the beautiful Christ consciousness energy that is in this sanctuary today. I lean into the embrace. I allow it to be. And we anchor this together by saying, and so it is, and so I am, and so we are. Alleluia. Alleluia. Mm -hmm. Alleluia. 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 Thank you again for taking the time to be with us today. We know that the only thing that we have is our time. And we bless you and we love you and we enjoy spending this time with you so much. And this is our time of conscious giving where we are provided the opportunity to give where we are spiritually fed. And if you are so moved, we would welcome your gifts, your tithes, your offerings as our ushers come forward. Uh, so grateful for their service and for your service as well. We have a multitude of ways for you to give. If you would like us to consider anything else, Bobby, close your ears. Please let us know and we would be happy to consider it. Uh, we, we promise to be good stewards of um, everything that you are sharing with us and we are most grateful. And if you would join me, please, in blessing our gifts and offerings. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I bet you all know this song. I learned it from a young lady about 16 at unity <laughs> our thoughts are prayers think what all you're praying our thoughts are prayers listen to what you're saying seek a higher consciousness a state of peacefulness Remember, God is always there. Every thought becomes a prayer. Our 
our thoughts, our prayers, the tools we create and that we think with. Our thoughts, our prayers, that's what spirit resonates with. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of mindfulness, and remember God is everywhere, and every thought becomes a prayer. So when we pray, we feel our heart go deeper, a state of peacefulness and remember God is always So my friends, if it's new for you to clap after musical offerings, I just wanted to share with you, it's something that we do, not only in recognition of the beautiful spiritual gifts that uh, Karen and all of our musicians share with us, but it helps acknowledge the energy in the space and it helps shift the energy for whatever is coming next. So just a little bit of context for you. And we have two beautiful beings who spend morning with Miss Eustane in uh, Kids Church in Youth of Unity <laughs> and it's their it's their first visit with them yeah. with us and they are um, the offspring 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 of our uh, delightful Pam Goff so Pam thank you and they're not too excited to talk at this moment being in front of a room full of strangers. So we just want to say thank you and we love you and we hope you come back. Is that all right? You want to go sit with grandma? Well, so if you would join me, my friends, and not only um, a blessing for these two extraordinary beings, but for all the young people in our community and all the young people of the world, let us rub our hands together, create some great energy, and offer it out to the youth of the world. You are loved, special, and important. We see you and bless the divine being that you are. Before we move into our prayer for protection, I did have uh, an announcement that I wanted to share with you. Um, I have been offered a position as the full-time minister at Unity in the Rockies in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I have offered a uh, verbal commitment to them for that position. So what that looks like, thank you, thank you that looks like is Reverend Doris and I have a plan, have a calendar through the end of the year here at UOTA. Uh, nothing with that is going to change. You still get uh, Doris when you get Doris and you get David when you don't get Doris. So uh, I will be with you through the end of the year and I will start in my new post in Colorado Springs uh, at the beginning of the new year. So I have been in communication with our board and with Reverend Doris throughout the process. I shared with them today the latest update and I am humbled and honored and grateful to have received um, their prayerful good wishes. So what I know my friends, what you have heard me share before is whatever is in the highest and best for one, 
must be in the highest and best for all. I know this beloved community is in extraordinarily good hands, in kind hands, in kind hearts, and surrounded with great love. It's been uh, my honor to be with you almost these past three years. You took a bet on a guy who never served in a pulpit before. And uh, I take full responsibility for the potholes that I, that I hit. And I am most grateful for your love, for your support, for your consciousness, and for the heart connection that I feel we share. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We've got the rest of the year to work through this, lots of details to come. Um, if you'll ask me, I don't know. If you ask anybody else, they don't know unless they're making it up. So uh, we'll, we'll share with you what we know when we know it. But uh, you're stuck with me through the end of the year. So please. <laughs> Please join me in our prayer for protection for this day, for the week ahead, and for all of us. The light of God surrounds us. I am that light. The love of God enfolds us. I am that love. The power of God protects us. I am that power. The presence of God watches over us. I am that presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Go in power, go in peace. Help me say thank you to God, how about that, okay? One, two, ready. Thank you God for everything, thank you God for everything. Come on, let me hear it. Donald, and I know you can for everything. I behave myself all day. Thank you, God, for everything. Yeah.